Hello everyone, this is Dr. K. Luella McGee, and this is the fifth session um, Bible life study for the nation of God. And on today, we're going to be uh, talking about a holy nation, a holy nation. So let us start off as we always do um, with a word of prayer. study for today, a holy nation, what I like to do is let everyone know that what we're using to help you uh, better understand the Word of God is a method called the Socratic Method. And the Socratic Method really helps us to uh, question um, something so we can get the answer through our questioning. So the Socratic method is a means of questioning something to get the answer. And so the Bible study that we're doing for this whole year, um, 2013, uh, is the nation of God, and I'm using nation of God, um, nation instead of kingdom, to try to make the term more relevant for today, because we do understand nations. Uh, we don't really use the term kingdom. And so we're trying to, first of all, ask the question, what is the nation of God? Why is the nation of God important? And what does it mean for me? Uh, what does the nation of God mean for me? And so on week two, uh, excuse me, on week one, uh, on January the 2nd, we were dealing with <clears throat> um, the nation of God and giving you an overview of that. And very quickly, we talked about, as my definition, the nation of God is the uh, presence, purpose, and power of God ruling 
and reigning in our lives. And we found out that the, the nation of God is very important because, you know, God wants us to be uh, a part of uh, Him. And we talked about that also because for us, if we become uh, part of the nation of God, we, we become citizens of the nation of God, but we also become uh, children of God. And that is a very, very important uh, factor um, for us. We also know in uh, the second week that we learned uh, about the gospel of the nation of God. And these are little nuances so we can have the comprehensive knowledge of what is uh, the nation of God. And so first week, the nation of God, overview of what that is. The second week, the gospel of the nation of God. And you should have learned uh, from John 3.16 that the gospel or the good news is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so that's the good news for anyone that need to hear it. You don't have to be condemned, as we found out why it's important. You can be saved. And this is a message that transcends, really, religion and uh, denomination. Some would want to put it in a Christian context, but uh, I'm trying to make a trans-religious and a trans-denominational message because I believe that God's message of salvation, as the Bible says, is to the world. And so the good news is sin came into the world through Adam and Eve, um, and so we were on, under a constant, um, I guess, cloud of sin and all the things that we did, and in the Old Testament times, what people did or the priests did was they made sacrifices unto the Lord, um, especially on the, the, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, so they can be able to go into the presence of God. And if you talk about the tabernacle, which we're going to deal with very in-depthly in uh, some lessons in the future, but you, you, you cannot go into the presence of God unless you are holy, unless you are pure, or unless you are clean. And so the priests may sacrifice um, for uh, uh, himself or and the people and then proceed it to go into the presence of God in the Holy of Holies. So we learned about that and we learned about uh, condemnation versus salvation. And um, we gave some examples of that in Genesis with sin uh, and, and that we're trying to really uh, have sin be washed away. And now in the New Testament time, the only way that we can have sin uh, removed completely once and for all is through uh, God's Son, Jesus, when he shed his blood on Calvary's cross for the sins of the whole world. Not, not a denomination, not a race, uh, not, not, not a religion, but for the sins of the whole world. And then on uh, week three, we dealt with <clears throat> um, the children of God. What does it mean to be a child of God? And I gave you some scriptures there in Romans uh, 8. And we know that those who believe in the only begotten Son shall be called children of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God shall be called children of God. Uh, those who are peacemakers shall also be called children uh, of God. Um, so we know those are the things that help us become a child of God so we can be able to cry out, Abba, Father. That's, that's a very dear term unto God. So we can be able to do that. It's important to us because in the process of salvation, we must go come into the, the nation of God as a child. We should grow up in the stature of God 
uh, in the things of God and in the Word of God so we can eat the Word of God and be able to not only have sustenance, if you will, for ourselves, but for other people. In other words, the, 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 the gospel and our responsibility as children in the nation of God is not just for ourselves, but it's also to help spread the word to all of the world. The Bible says uh, the gospel of the nation of God shall be um, um, spread throughout the whole world, and then the end will come. And so we have a responsibility to help spread the, the gospel of the nation of God to the whole wide world. So we talked uh, also about, you know, those who love also children of God. We, we also gave you John 3 and um, verses 19 to 21 to understand what is uh, so important for you, I should say, uh, for being a, a, a child of God. And really, the importance to you is you want to be able at all times uh, to walk in the full authority, if you will, the full authority uh, of God and and uh, and all that comes with that, the blessings that come with that, the benefits of being a child of God um, by adoption uh, of the Holy Spirit. And that's so, so important for you to understand that. And then last week, we talked about being an heir of God or heirs of God and joint heirs um, with Christ. And, and what that simply helped us uh, to focus on is that to be an heir means that you have a legal right to everything that God would leave for you. Make sure you understand that. You have a legal right to everything, property, benefits, everything that God would leave to you. And we share that, if you will, with our brother, eldest brother, born of God, um, and by the Spirit of God, and that is Jesus Christ. And so we... As we talked about some weeks ago, the kingdom of God or the nation of God is now, but it's not yet. And so if we share in the sufferings uh, that Jesus suffered uh, in, um, we shall also be glorified with him when he returns. And so until that time, we must uh, persevere. Uh, we must do those things um, that are pleasing in the sight of God to know that our inheritance, our inheritance has already been written. The Bible um, has two uh, testaments. One is the Old Testament or the Old Covenant, and one is the New Testament or the New Covenant. And some could say this is the New Testament or the New Covenant is... Um, um, a, a, a will. It's a last will and testament, if you will. And, and, and those terms, will and testament, are redundant terms, but we have said that. Last will and testament. And so that is what we use to say, this is what belongs to me legally. And because of that, I have the authority, uh, I have the legal right to take and to get everything that belongs to uh, to me, that's powerful. I don't know if you can catch that or not, but really, if you go into the Bible, everything that 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 is there is telling you the promises that God uh, has has given to you, telling you the property that God has given to you, and you really need to take um, ownership uh, of that. In fact, let us go to. Uh, Romans 8, and I'm going to read uh, Romans 8, 26 through 28. And uh, we're reading that because um, I, I believe it's so important for you just to to be able to hear it because you know, we, we've been reading these scriptures for a very long time, but... Um, but we don't get to the point of uh, understanding that 
This belongs to you, and you should not uh, give up. You should not ever give up. Again, if you can go to Romans uh, 8, and I'm going to read verse 26 through 28, and this is, um, matter of fact, I just go ahead and read down to 29. And likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints, that be you, uh, according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, and this is, I love this scripture, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. A called, uh, a called according to his purpose. For those who but whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed, watch this now, to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, and I do insert sisterhood. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also uh, justified, and those whom he justified, he also Glorified, and in, in other words, you will be exalted by sharing in um, the sufferings and going through what God wants you to go through uh, in this life. So now, let us transition a little bit to uh, going from the nation of God, the children of God, heirs of God, uh, and I forgot the one, the gospel of the nation of God is number two. Let me just go back and just say those again. The nation of God, number one. The gospel of the nation of God. The children of God. Heirs of God. And then now, a holy nation of God. You can put that on there. So there are two um, scriptures uh, specifically that I want you to go to. And to kind of give you a context, but let us go first to um, First Peter two. Again, First Peter, and we go number two there. And uh, I'm going to read really one through uh, twelve. First Peter one through twelve, just. To kind of give you a context, and then there's one other scripture that I want uh, to read to you. Again, 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 1 through 12. And again, I, I like to read from many different versions, but the version I like best is the English Standard Version. The English Standard Version, ESV. And this is what it says uh, on my iPad. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation. And that's so important for you to hear that. Grow up into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, 
The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you who are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have uh, received mercy. Verse 11, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. And we should know that the verse I used uh, to kind to kind of a capture uh, and summarize uh, this whole Bible study comes from First Peter chapter two verse nine, which says, "But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of His own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him." who called you out of darkness and into the marvelous light. And we are a holy nation. We are a peculiar people, a chosen race, a royal priesthood. And I believe that someone needs to hear this on, on today. So we will answer uh, the questions then, what is the holy nation? Really, there's only one holy nation. It's not a holy nation. It's the holy nation. And the holy nation of God, if you will. Why is the uh, nation of God, the holy nation of God, uh, important? And then what does it mean for you? And I think with this same scripture... You can find all those answers within it that I read to you, but um, um, we're going to just touch base on it a little bit and read some other scriptures uh, to help us understand it uh, just a, 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 a little bit better. So let's go back and take out the phrase, a holy nation, um, or the holy nation of God. What is a holy nation? Where the, the word holy uh, means without um, spot, without blemish, uh, consecrated, uh, set aside for a special purpose. It also means sacred. So holy means all those things. Uh, nation, really what it says there is, uh, we are a chosen race. We are a group of people. Uh, but, but, but within this uh, nation, if you will, we also are a royal priesthood. So we are taking on all those uh, titles and attributes and characteristics in order to be uh, a holy nation. The only holy nation of God. And these are people throughout the whole world who God is calling uh, to God's self. Uh, and we are not only to be a nation, but to be a holy nation. And some have uh, heard that term and have glossed over, over it. And we will read um, further that in order to be uh, in the, the nation of God, to be a holy nation of God, there's certain things that we must do. We, we can't be do, doing things in the dark that will come into the light because God wants us to be clean. He wants us to be representative 
He wants us to conform to the image of his son. So let us go to Exodus, again, on, in the Old uh, Testament or Old Covenant, and go to chapter uh, 19, chapter 19. And we're going to restart, begin to read from verse 1 and read down uh, a little ways. And what I'm trying to do is help you understand in the Old Covenant how God uh, began to, to uh, show you what a, a, a holy nation uh, is. And for us to be a holy nation, we, we can see it here in Scripture and know that what we must do. Uh, verse 1, uh, chapter 19 of the book of Exodus. On the third new moon after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel camped before the mountain while Moses went up to God. The Lord God called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. So stop there for a second and realize that God's purpose is to reconcile or to bring uh, the world back to him. And we need to understand that and from the beginning of the fall uh, this, where uh, Adam and Eve sinned, there has been this gap. And once a year they would have uh, this, this atonement. Um, some would say at one minute of come to, coming back into the presence by cleansing ourselves um, through the sacrifice of, of the priests offering the sacrifices for us and for themselves to be able to come into the presence of God and live in the fullness of the blessings that God had uh, for us. Verse 5, now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all people, peoples, all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me, watch this, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. I love that. Okay? A kingdom of priests, a nation of priests, and but a holy nation, these are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. Okay? So, God is setting the stage for us to understand through these scriptures what it means to be a nation of God. Let me read on. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people um, of, uh, to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am coming to you in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you, and may also believe you forever. And when Moses told the words of the people to the Lord, the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate. Again, this is in verse 10 of uh, chapter 19 in the book of Exodus. Verse 10 says, The Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Okay? And let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people, and you shall set limits for the people all around, saying, Take care not to go up into the mountain or touch the edge of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. No hand shall touch him, but he shall be stoned or shot. Whether beast or man, he shall not 
live. When the trumpet sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and consecrated, consecrated the people, and they washed their garments. And he said to the people, be ready for the third day. Do not go near a woman. In other words, what uh, 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 Moses was instructed to do by God was to prepare himself and the people to come um, as a holy nation. I want you to get that. By consecrating yourself, cleaning oneself, not going um, uh, near a, a woman, not desiring the, the, the things of the flesh, but really consecrating themselves, dedicating oneself, setting oneself aside to be dedicated to God. And so when we come into the very presence of God, we must be holy. We must be uh, clean ceremoniously and physically. Um, and again, now for the New Testament, that's showing us symbolically that we come um, to God to really make sure morally, spiritually, um, even physically, uh, that we are really attuned and focused uh, on God and really hearing from the Lord. And we can't really hear from God if we're not in God's presence. So we have to be made holy. Remember, in this scripture, it talked about we cannot touch the mountain because even the edge of the mountain was holy. And if you were to touch that which is so holy, although we were getting to the point of being cleansed and, and, and consecrated or set aside or and all this stuff, God is so holy we cannot, we cannot even touch um, him. And we remember in the Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant, that someone had to have these wood poles to carry the Ark of the Covenant, but if they touched the ark, which is holy, made out of the ark, wood, whatever else, gold, I should say, then they would die, okay, even by mistake, because God is that holy. And some may, may not be able to understand that, but you uh, need to understand that you cannot, you cannot come uh, in the presence of God without cleansing oneself and uh, revering God and reverencing God, I, I should say, uh, as God deserves to be referenced. Let me read on. On the morning of the third day, there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast, so that all the people in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. Okay, And they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire. Okay? The smoke of it went up like the smoke of Kiln, and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And as the sound of the trumpet uh, grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God uh, answered him in, in thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, and the Lord God called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Verse 21. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people, lest they break through the Lord, to the Lord to look, and many of them perish. And let the priests who come near to the Lord consecrate themselves. Hear that word again. Let the Lord break out against them. So, in other words, we've got to consecrate. We've got to make ourselves clean. We've got to prepare ourselves before we come into the presence of God. And Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you yourself warned us, saying, Set limits around the mountain and consecrate it. And the Lord said to him, Go down and come up, bringing Aaron. Okay, Aaron um, was, the, at the time, um, out of Aaron um, came priests. Um, but do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to the Lord, lest he break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. So what I want you to 
to get here is in, in the Old Testament is uh, really right before Exodus 20 where God gave out the Ten Commandments. Okay, the Ten Commandments. And we know if we take the Ten Commandments that he gave out and we you know, fast forward that to the, to the New Testament, um, the, the summary of the commandments and the law is to love God with your whole uh, your heart, soul, mind, and, and, and body, and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So well, to the point of you just understanding uh, what is the holy nation, the holy, holy nation is a people consecrated, watch this now, consecrated unto God, okay? Consecrated unto God, set aside for a special purpose for God, basically as he said in 1 and 1 Peter uh, 2 and 9. So you should understand that. The only way that we are going to be a holy nation, what is a holy nation, is a consecrated people. A people who um, has set themselves aside, people who have become clean ceremoniously and spiritually and physically, that is what God is looking for. We're not, as 1 Peter 2 talked about, uh, doing things uh, to be vindictive of people, to get back at people. We are uh, made, watch this, once again, in the image, the image of the Son of God, Jesus, okay? So you should understand that. And there's no uh, other way around um, becoming a part of the holy nation without being consecrated. Let me, let me look up that word and see what a new definition um, would be. The word consecrated means solemnly dedicated to or set apart for a high purpose, okay? Made or declared or believed to be holy, uh, devoted to a deity or some religious ceremony or use, sacred. Um, when, I, when I put the term consecrate, not consecrated, but consecrate, it says, to appoint to a clerical post, to ordain, to ordinate, an order, uh, give entirely to a specific person, activity, uh, or cause. Um, and I like the other part of that is, again, to solemnly, de solemnly dedicated to or set apart, apart uh, for a high purpose. That's what uh, to be a holy nation is all about. And that nation is, is, is not the nation you live in. We talked about some weeks ago that um, uh, you could be a part of a nation, but you have dual citizenship with whatever nation you're in and the nation of God. So I want you to get that. I want you to go over now to try to understand why it is important, uh, why the, a holy nation is important. Uh, so again, go to Hebrews. And just go to the whole book, uh, the chapter 5, okay? Go to Hebrews chapter 5, and beginning at verse 1. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer sacrifices or gifts and sacrifices for sin. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated, watch this now, uh, to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. Remember, Aaron was the, the priestly order, came out of Aaron, in Aaron's uh, group. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, 
Today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And I don't know if you remember that, but you can study that in your own time. Melchizedek had no predecessor or no successor. In other words, it was an order. There was no beginning and end. We know that God is the Alpha and the Omega, but there's one that came before, written, none that will come after. It's done. Jesus is in this order of Melchizedek as a high priest appointed by God. In the days of his flesh, when Jesus was here on earth, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. That's God was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Okay? Now, it goes on here uh, in verse 11, before we get to Hebrews chapter 6, talk about, warning about apostasy. And listen to what it is. About this we have to, uh, much to say. It is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing, but though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need uh, milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. And that's a word uh, for today, and we talked about this before. Remember that salvation is a process, and the Bible says, whoever endures until the end shall be saved. In the process of salvation, we come into the kingdom as a babe, desiring the sincere milk of the word so that we may grow thereby. What God wants you to do in your, uh, your salvation, coming into salvation, being made into, uh, being brought into the nation of God with all the rights and privileges, God wants you to grow up to be a, an adult in the word of God, okay? God don't want you to remain a, a child forever. We talked about as an heir. Remember, if a baby is to be born and they are an heir, um, they can't take ownership because they have a guardians over them and the property until they become of age. And this is what this word is saying to us on today is God wants you to be mature in the words of God so you can take full ownership of all those things that belong to you. I'm getting excited about this because this is so clear to me that many people come into salvation, they're there, but they will never, ever receive all the full benefits for themselves for themselves because they're not mature in the word of God. They're not able to discern that which is good and versus that which is evil. They're not able to take uh, all the benefits and all the property that belongs to them because they're not skilled in the word of God. So this is why it's so important to you is that a holy nation is, we're talking about that you are able to call yourself a priest, a priest in the order that Jesus is in, the order of Melchizedek. And you, watch this now, can make sacrifices for yourself or offer sacrifices for yourself, and you can uh, also offer sacrifices, prayers, and supplications for the people unto God. You can stand in the gap, and as I like to say, be a gap feeler between God and the people because you have already consecrated yourself to be a priest ordained, consecrated, set aside for 
the high purpose which God has called you to. That's 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 powerful, okay? But you have to grow yourself up. And so salvation is there, but it's also a process that God wants you to grow up, be strong in, in, in the word of God, in the statute of God, so you can be able to handle the affairs of God as part of the nation of God, a holy nation, a consecrated nation, a nation dedicated to God, set aside for God's purposes. But you've got to make sure that you're all right. Now, that means really constantly um, be aware of what you're doing to make sure that you are constantly, watch this, not just in church, but constantly in the very presence of of God to have the purposes and power of God ruling and reigning in your life. Not just when you're in church, okay, or mosque or temple, because again, this is a trans religious, trans denominational uh, word, but God wants you to have His covering, His presence on you at all times so you can clearly see His purpose for you and have the power to be able. To, to, to execute what he has called you to do. That's, that's the power of worship. That's important to you to understand that God wants you to grow up and be a, 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 a kingdom, a nation of priests. Okay? And that means you've got to be uh, mature. Okay? So I want you to uh, see that, but I'm also going to go to another scripture here that I want you to uh, hold on to. Um, and I want you to go to Acts chapter Seven, Acts chapter 7, um, And I'm going to read verses 35 through um, 42. This Moses, when whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? This man God sent as both ruler and redeemer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. This man led them out, perform, uh, performing wonders and signs in Egypt and at the Red Sea, and in the wilderness for 40 years. This is the Moses who said to the Israelites, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. This is the one whom, who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai and with our fathers. He received living oracles to give to uh, us our fathers refused to obey him, but thrust him aside, and in their hearts they turned to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make for us gods who will go before us. As for this, Moses, who led us out from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered a sacrifice to the idol and rejoicing in the works of their hands. But God turned away and gave them over to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of prophets, Did you bring to, to me slain beasts and sacrifices during the 40 years in the wilderness? So we want you uh, to understand that it is so very important for you to um, to understand that we're not to be coming toward the 
of the Lord bringing uh, sacrifices not fit for God. We need to understand that our lives should be such that we uh, are made right. We are consecrated to God. That's, that's so important. We'll talk about that again in Hebrews um, 5. And so for you, again, going from Hebrews 5, it's, 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 it, what it means for you is you have a decision uh, to make. This verse in Acts 7, verses 35 through 42, really is saying, what are you going to do? It's forcing you to make a decision that you're going to worship, you know, something uh, other than God and think that th they are going to save you. They're not going to save you. You've got to make a decision on your life as far as what you are going to do. Are you going to do the right thing? Are you going to try to walk in the order, the priestly order of Melchizedek? And Jesus is the first, the high priest within this order of Melchizedek. You need to make a decision uh, about that because God wants you to do so. Okay? So we want to become a, a, a holy nation, a holy nation of God who really is going forth doing the purposes of God and really doing it with power. And that's beautiful. Really doing it with power. Okay. And this is like no other movement, if you will. God wants us to go beyond uh, what we, 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 we think we uh, should do in listening to man, but God wants us to, you know, go with, you know, what he wants us to do. And all we're going to do that is really to get into the word of God. Let me just give this analogy. Have you uh, noticed that um, many people say they go to church, but they, their lives does not represent what God, I guess, would be pleased with? And how could that be? And I think you know, God is coming back for a church, if you will, without spot or wrinkle. So you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can fool God none of the time. Okay? You have a decision to make to be a part of the holy nation that God wants you to be a part of. God doesn't want you to play church. God does not want you to just go to church. God wants you to be the church. And everywhere that you go, you carry with you the very presence of God. You carry with you the very purpose of God for your life, but you can help someone connect to God so they can find out their purpose in life. And you, okay, can have a power that God wants you to have to do those things, okay? Uh, I've been sending out some one-minute motivational moments, and one, and one of the days I talked about that, uh, God is the creator of the world. And uh, so often people try to find out what their purpose is apart from God. And I gave this analogy. This uh, hat that I have on my head could be called a spiritus, could be called a fandana, um, but it is my invention. And so I am the one that names it, and I am the one that tells what uh, the purpose of this thing is. It's, it's, it's to look good, number one, but it's also uh, to um, stop sweat. So the same thing is with God. Someone else cannot tell me what my invention is all about, 
That's the same way it is with God. You can't go to someone else to tell you what, what God intended for you to, to do and to be on this, this earth uh, apart from God. The only place you can find out your true purpose, your ultimate purpose for being here on this earth is by going to God, coming into God's presence. And what we learned here, in order for you to be a part of a holy nation, not a babe, uh, a, 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 a priest, a queenly priest, if you will, a kingly priest, if you will, we're going to have to consecrate ourselves in order to be a holy nation. So I'm working on making sure every day of my life that you know I'm in tune with what God would have me do in the very presence the very presence of God okay so that's 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 the word for today for you is you have to be able to say number one I know what what, what a holy nation is a holy nation is a consecrated people a people set aside a people who understand their purpose uh, in, in, in life, uh, uh, people uh, who is ceremoniously and, and, and religiously and, 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 and spiritually clean in order for us to be in the very presence of God. That's, that's number one. That's what is the, the, a holy nation. It's important because we don't want to be babes in the word. We want to be of, of mature stature so we can really discern what is right and wrong and do those things, carry out the business of uh, the nation of God as a holy nation. And then last, as we talked about, we want to be able to walk in that so we can do those things uh, all the time where God would want us to do. Okay? So let's conclude this, this uh, study on today and uh, close with a prayer. Dear God, we thank you now for all those who received a revelation word, if you will, to know, to discern, to understand more clearly what you are calling them to do. I believe you told me to talk to them about not being a babe in the Lord, but being um, a, a one who desires the meat of the word. So they can make sure that they are strong, but they can help someone also mature them up so they can be strong, so they can help someone else out. And the cycle would go on and on. Dear God, I pray for those who are already in uh, this holy nation of yours. I pray for those who will be coming in the, the holy nation of yours. So dear God, all across the world, I pray for those wherever they may be, whatever race they may be, uh, forget the religion right now, but they want to be your children and they want to be a part of your holy nation. Dear God, receive them if they understand what they must do to come into your um, kingdom and your nation. Dear God, I pray in the only name that I know, the name of Jesus, the one who died for the sins of the world only by his blood that uh, he died once for all and then it's the whole world. I pray in this name, this name of Jesus, together we say all over the world, amen. So we are concluding uh, this message and we thank you once again if you have uh, tuned in all across uh, the world. Wherever you may be at, if you have any questions, you can uh, write me at dr underscore klm at me.com, and I will be glad to, to talk with you. So, once again, let's close out. Listen to a little bit of the song that I wrote called, Whoever Dwells in the Secret Place of the Most High God Abides in His Strength.
and wells in the secret place. 